new video game, let's players free Palestine and fight Israel, titled Fursan Al-Aqsa, the Knights of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This game is also having some controversy. This game, this brand new game announced, it's coming to Steam, it's, you can already get it on there. A new video game headed for Steam will see players take part in the Israeli-Palestine Palestinian conflict from the Palestinian perspective. Titled for San Al-Aqsa, the Knights of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the game is developed by Nadal Najim, a Brazilian resident of Palestinian origin. The game promises to let players take the role of Palestinian freedom fighters and break what it calls the cliche of portraying Arabs as terrorists. Well, we're going to watch the trailer. You tell me if you think it breaks the cliche or not. You will play in missions across Palestine with many objectives to accomplish epic battles, powerful guns, vehicles to drive, and more. That's what it says on the game's Steam page. You can't always take what you read on Steam for a description of games too much to heart. The game is currently slated for a December 2021 release, just in time for Christmas. And use, uh, would it be trolling to buy this for somebody as a Christmas gift? User reviews are currently not available on the platform. However, a free playable demo is available, so you guys can go play it. The game story follows protagonist Ahmad al falastini who was unjustly tortured and jailed by the IDF for five years and who lost his family in an IDF airstrike. As noted on the Fursan al website, now free from prison, Falastini is out on a quest for revenge to retake his homeland by joining the titular Fursan al a new Palestinian resistance movement. The story and gameplay combine promise a high-octane action experience with the story taking place over adrenaline-packed missions on the ground, sea, and sky. It will feature a wide variety of gun settings, vehicles, and even boss fights. With its politically charged narrative and contemporary setting, the game itself bears similarities to its influences such as, get this, Metal Gear Solid and Call of Duty. The Jim himself has been working on this game alone for 10 years. And the efforts do show in the initial trailers and gameplay footage. In it, one can see an alternating third and first person perspective, a variety of environments, and Philistini even using what appears to be bullet time mechanics mid-combat, as well as shouting, Allah Akbar, God is great. It'll also have multiplayer rather than having an emphasis on online play. It'll be split screen. The throwback is on full display in that respect with a notable influence from the classic 90s shooter Goldeneye. This influence doesn't just hark back to the gameplay, but to the difficulty. So the games, you know, they're talking about the background of the of the designer of the game. It says, you became a martyr on here. There's some weird posters. So this game's coming out. Let's not, uh, let's not belabor the point. We came here for one main reason, and it's to react to this trailer. <laughs> There's literally a Nintendo 64 looking controller as, as like the, uh, the, the logo of his company. So I guess it's probably legit that he's bearing some like N64 inspirations and not just that that's the extent of his capabilities graphics wise. So there's all these Indie Awards, Selected for Competition Excellence, Independent Games Festival, Top 100 Indie Games. <sighs> I hope you guys are ready. It's going to be good. The quote here says, With bullets and blood, we will free Palestine. I've never seen a more terrorist looking dude. I've, ne I've never in my life seen somebody who looks more like a terrorist than this guy right here. The claim that they're trying to break the stereotype of the Palestinians being the terrorists in this conflict totally fail right away. This is the most terrorist looking person that I've ever seen it portrayed in a video game in my entire life. Period. <laughs> Jesus, the graphics are really bad, but also the sneaking up knife kill that we just saw. This throws me back to like ISIS propaganda videos, 100%. This is the most terrorist looking thing. I, this is 100% you're playing as a terrorist. I mean, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
Damn, got him with the second stab. This is, for, this is for sure somebody's imagination of how this would go, who has no real life experience of any sort of combat or anything, or like really what it would be like to go walk into a room. First of all, there's no door for him to come through. So you got to assume he jumped over the wall or jumped down from the ceiling. He just like shot four guys while they stood there standing in the open. And this has got to be the most like wet dream imagination of what this situation would actually be like in real life um, that I've ever seen. So the fist of opposition, the words Palestine will be free as he runs up and fires a RPG and yells Allah Akbar. Oh, some slow-mo RPG effects. It literally looks like the levels from Goldeneye. Headshot. Headshot. Okay, here. This is this is one of the best parts, you guys. So this is like literally a Goldeneye level. He's going through like a secret IDF bunker or something. <laughs> he can fly. You can fly in this game. You can fly. The Palestinian freedom fighter can fly. It says we fight for freedom, but we fly for fun. It doesn't really say that second part. I made that up. But he can literally fly, you guys. He can fly. This is this is real life. So look out, Israel. Look out, Israel. The Palestinian freedom fighters have taken flight. Oh my god, when you take damage, you blink. Like in a Nintendo game. When you take damage, when you take damage, you blink. Bro. <laughs> he just accordion this dude and then got like eight security rounds. Look at this like reverse scorpion. Look at this like reverse scorpion action going on here from the Israeli soldier. And then he wastes him with his, his saw like five or six more times. Jeez. Oh my God. What? We just witnessed the classic throw the grenade and the grenade blows up and the person just dissolves into a pile of meat. Like eight, eight body parts. Just like random like body gr gruesome assets or whatever. God, what? I gotta see that one again. Ah, oh, Jesus. I'm also getting super intense Borat vibes. Like, there's little doubt in my mind that there's not a level in this game where they go, okay, we have to stop Israel before they lay their Jew eggs. Like, there's, is there any chance that that's not a level in this game? Like, quick, <laughs> quick, we have to do this mission. There's a four-minute timer because they'll lay their Jew eggs and they'll take all your money. Like, there, there's no chance this is, that's not a level in this game. <laughs> no! Oh, no! Oh no, there's a baby swaddled on his back. Stop it. Stop it. This guy who's <laughs> currently flying. I'm 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 crying. I'm crying. The okay, our hero, our Palestinian hero is mid-flight flying to the right like a a, a strafing flight move wasting an IDF soldier with a baby strapped to his back. A baby strapped to his back. Straight up a baby just dangling off his backpack.
So literally, I, I, I might have been right a second ago. Like now he has to escape with the Jew egg to bring it back to Palestine so they can study its DNA. This is really happening. Oh, God. The baby's grown up. The baby's grown up into a woman. Her face is covered, so don't worry, guys. Her face is covered. She's, she's being currently liberated back to Palestine where she can be beaten and tortured. Is there a worse way to get liberated? Honestly. Like, this is... Is this real? So now, the dude's got a lady strapped to his back, strapped to his back, dangling there while he runs and jumps over a rooftop, also wasting IDF dudes. Like, that's in every scene. We resist until death. Maybe it's a trans. Maybe it's a translation thing. I, I, I mean, I know it's not, but. Resistance is not terrorism. This is, it's a total propaganda piece. So he's got a tank that fires hand grenades. Like not a, not like a, not like a grenade launcher, like a tank that just lobs hand grenades eight feet. And you can play against each other. If somebody wants to be the IDF, you can go split screen. Split screen where it's like one on the top, one on the bottom split screen. What do you, are you guys more a fan of top, bottom split screen or left, right split screen? I'd love to hear that fight in the comments. Add it to your wish list on Steam. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. That exists now in the world. It's called Fursan Aloxa. You can download it today, the demo. I saw some comments requesting I play it. You guys want me to. I'll, I'll have it ready to go tomorrow. The truth is that I have no issue with that game existing. I mean, what kind of hypocrite would I be if I said cancel that game? Like, seriously, what kind of monster would I be? If I went on all these videos saying Six Days to Fluja is art. Art should be jarring and controversial. People have to have their freedom of expression. I think it's fine. It doesn't, I have no, I'm not bothered by this at all. There's way worse stuff out there. But that looks laughably bad. I mean, seriously, laughably bad. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that clip from our live show. We're live right here on YouTube, Sunday through Thursday, 1800 Pacific Standard Time. If you want, come on by, join the chat. I'd love to hear from you. If you like that video and you want to see more, consider checking out this video right here or subscribing to the channel with this button right here. I look forward to talking to you really soon. I'm out for now.